Good morning. There's a uh, old, um, you know, dinner time table conversation or car time conversation where we ask each other, when we get to heaven, who do you want to meet? Who do you want to see? So my question to you this morning is, uh, when we get to heaven, who from the Bible do you want to meet? Besides Jesus, you're definitely going to meet Jesus. But, but who else might you be interested in meeting? Moses. Moses. Matthew. Matthew? Yeah. Matthew. Who? Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The other Mary, Mary Magdalene. All three services have wanted to meet Mary Magdalene. David, David. good one. Jonah. Jonah, oh. What was it like? <laughs> Those three terrible days, right? Yeah. Um, uh, on, uh, from online, uh, Kathy Seabrook also said um, Mary Magdalene. Perhaps uh, if you haven't shouted anything out, you might think about that through the rest of the sermon, who you might want to meet, and maybe you can tell me at the back door. Um, I, I have lots of answers to that question. There's lots of people I'm looking forward to meet. I want to meet Aaron. Uh, I'd like to meet Mark, you know, the, the guy who this church is uh, named after. Um, there's a lot of them. I, I heard a sermon a few weeks ago uh, online that sort of changed my thinking. I, I'm, I'm sure I would not have said this three weeks ago, but today I might like to meet the fellow that we met in today's gospel lesson, the thief who was crucified with Jesus um, and who said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He's a fascinating person, and I think he'd be a fascinating person to meet in heaven because I think on paper, by the traditions of the church and even uh, a lot of the teachings of the scriptures, he probably shouldn't be there. I mean, if he came up to him in heaven and said, oh, nice to meet you. What church did you go to? Oh, I didn't go to church. Oh, okay. Well, you were lived before there were churches. Okay. So who, who baptized you? Well, I wasn't baptized. Oh, did you ever take communion? No. Hmm. Were you a prayerful man? <laughs> no. Uh, were you at least a good person? Did you do good in the world? No, I was a criminal who was sentenced to death on a holiday. Then how did you get here? And the only answer he could really give is because the guy who was crucified next to me told me I could come. He's the very embodiment of grace. He did nothing in his life to ever possibly earn or deserve his heavenly place. And yet, there he is. Because Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. We oftentimes call him the repentant thief. Uh, as opposed to the other thief who is uh, constantly uh, uh, laughing and uh, deriding Jesus. But he doesn't, to me, check all of the boxes for repentance. He says he deserves to be there. He tells the other thief who is uh, uh, crucified there that you and I deserve to be here and Jesus doesn't deserve to be here. So he owns his own uh, complicity, which is admirable, but he doesn't say he's sorry. He doesn't ask for forgiveness from anyone before him or from Jesus crucified next to him. But what he says, his, his little prayer, his little uh, statement directly to Jesus is fascinating. He says, Jesus remember me when you come 
into your kingdom. Now, we hear these words um, with the benefit of 2,000 years of Christianity, right? We hear these words knowing that they're spoken on the cross on Good Friday and knowing that Easter Sunday is coming. We know that uh, Jesus' death is not final. We know that Jesus lives, that the story works out, right? No one there on that Good Friday knew that. Certainly not this criminal who is crucified with Jesus. And yet he sees Jesus and identifies him as having a kingdom, as therefore being a king, because he calls it your kingdom, and believing that Jesus has a future, that there's, there's going to be another chapter to the story whereby Jesus could remember him in his kingdom. No one else standing there at the cross that day would have looked at Jesus and said, oh, there's a king with a kingdom who has a future. They were all laughing at him, saying that he was a king. They had put the crown of thorns on his head. They had wrapped him in a purple cloak. They had mocked him. They put a sign over his head, the king of the Jews. They were all laughing at him as a king. Here's the one guy in the whole place who's like, this guy's a king with a kingdom and a future. Asking him to remember him. It's kind of astonishing. So when I meet him in heaven, the the question I want to ask him is, is, How'd you know? How did you see this thing that no one else saw? In 1925, the world was a bit of a mess. Uh, the world, Europe was just uh, not even a decade after World War I. It was still trying to pick itself up. Uh, and get itself on to its feet, dealing with all the things that that catastrophic war meant for Europe. In 1925, Adolf Hitler tried to stage a coup in Germany, what we call the Beer Hall Putsch. Uh, he gets thrown in jail for a short while, and in 1925, he writes Mein Kampf. In 1925, in Russia, Lenin dies and Stalin comes to power. In Italy, in 1922, uh, Mussolini came to power through a coup. And in 1925, he dissolved parliament, said, we don't need you guys anymore because I'm going to be the dictator of this country. And in 1925, Pope Pius XI said that he was going to add a new holiday to the church calendar. Now, we're, a, we're an old religious movement. We've been around for nearly 2,000 years, and a lot of our holy days are 2,000 years old or 1,000 years old. You know, Easter, we've set, Christians have celebrated Easter for almost 2,000 years. Christians have celebrated Christmas for about 1,500 years. A lot of our ho- holidays and holy days are ancient. But he's in 1925, not even 100 years ago, he's like, we're going to do a new holy day. And this new holy day he was calling for is called Christ the King Sunday. He announced this holy day for two reasons. One, uh, he saw a troubling rise in secularism, which kind of makes me laugh a little bit. Because I think today we'd look back then and say those were the golden days of the church. We would long for the, you know, the 20s back if, you know, if only uh, he could see us today. But the other reason he called for Christ the King Sunday was to fight against this trend of people coming to power and declaring themselves with ultimate power and authority and basically sort of as modern-day emperors. 
And to them, Pope Pius XI said, no, you are not kings. Jesus is our king. And, and authority and leadership and kingship doesn't look like them. It looks like Jesus. He was proclaiming to the world that Jesus is king and that leadership should follow Jesus's model and not the model of Hitler or Stalin or Mussolini. Kind of stunningly, I mean, you, you know, in the early 1900s, mid-1900s, it's not like there was a lot of affinity between Catholic Christians and Protestant Christians. There were still a, a lot of uh, things that, um, you know, caused division between us. But pretty quickly, remarkably, Protestants picked up on this holy day, Episcopalians, and Lutherans, and Presbyterians, and Methodists, and a whole swath of Christians of all different stripes are today celebrating Christ the King Sunday. We didn't agree on much, but across denominations we agreed on this. But again, it's just fascinating to me that this man who is crucified next to Jesus didn't need a proclamation from a pope. He didn't need a new holy day to know that the man next to him was a king. To know that real leadership isn't absolute power and authority, but real leadership comes out of mercy and grace and love and truth and humility. It comes from a kind of person that does not seek his own glory, but offers the fullness of himself for others. That thief, that criminal didn't need all of those things, and yet somehow he knew it. And so again, my question for him someday will be, how'd you know? But the question I have today, without the benefit of seeing him face to face, is how do we know? How do we inhabit the belief that Christ is king and that belief that leadership should look like him? That he is the icon and paragon of what leadership should look like. And I... I don't have a full answer to that. But I think it's a good enough question that we should wrestle with it. Amen.